what do you think happens if there is no Bitcoin left on exchanges in the future? That's a great question. And I think, you know, the logical conclusion of that, how, how would we get there? I think there's multiple ways that we get there. You know, basically you've got nation states hoarding Bitcoin, you know, wealthy people hoarding Bitcoin, you know, literally people all over the world hoarding Bitcoin because this isn't, you know, a an asset for one person. I believe this is an asset that can serve 8 billion people. So the market is 8 billion people. Um, what happens when there's no Bitcoin, which I think is far-fetched, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. If there's no Bitcoin on exchanges, what needs to happen, I believe, is whatever is minted on the day needs to facilitate global trade. So if we look at what those numbers look like today, you've got roughly 6.3 trillion in global trade. Now, admittedly, a lot of that is made up of foreign exchange markets and the rest of it, so we can deduct that, but let's just use that number now. Actually, use whatever number you want to. I'll use 6.3 trillion, mm -hmm. and there's 900 Bitcoins minted today. So if you divide 6.3 trillion by 900, you basically get to a $7 billion Bitcoin. Outrageous numbers. And I think, and, sorry, bef before we even jumped on a call, you were telling me how that was uh, conservative, Peter. So I'd like to open up the bullpen for you and let you uh, <laughs> let you uh, educate the listeners on why that could potentially even be conservative. I, I, thank you for this. And this is where I sort of sound like I'm a little unhinged, but I'd I, really like to talk about the framework for coming up with a valuation model and allow everyone to input their own numbers into it because they can look at the numbers themselves. And if we we present that argument and framework in a way that everyone can follow along and disagree or not disagree, um, any rebuttals to it, I'd be more than happy to hear. Please reach out to me. My DMs are open on Twitter and we'll have that at the end of the show. But the framework for valuing Bitcoin, I think, is... We think of Bitcoin as a linear accretion of value. Now, what does that mean? Basically, what that means is, you know, to the arguments earlier about being the first triple point asset, I think that's that, that's an irrefutable argument that Bitcoin is the first triple point asset. It is better than gold, it's better than the US dollar, and it's better than the double entry ledger system that we've got. Now, what people I think get stuck on is that they think, well, if Bitcoin captures the gold market, it's 10 trillion. If it captures the US dollar market, it's 100 trillion. And by the way, I don't think that's going to happen for a very long time. And it's not really important to this conversation anyway. And if it captures the effectively the unit of account market, which is roughly 2000 trillion, then what you do is you add up those values and you divide it by the number of bitcoins. So roughly that works out in my mind to 2.1 quadrillion dollars divided by 21 million, and you get to a $100 million bitcoin. 